Well, welcome back to our live coverage of the Mackinac Policy Conference. We're just getting people in and out here talking about a lot of the issues that are impacting the state of Michigan and the success of our state moving forward. And a key one is education, whether you're talking about K through 12 education across the state of Michigan or you're specifically looking at Detroit Public Schools, which is what we're going to do right now. And joining me now to do that is Pamela Moore. She is the CEO of the Detroit Public Schools Foundation. It's good to see you again, Pamela. Thank you. And John Ricolta, you were the co-chair of the, uh, the commission last year that came up with all those recommendations for where the Detroit Schools District should go from there, and you're also the head of Walbridge. It's good to see you as well. Thank you for being here. And was isn't the proper word. Is. 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 Thank you. And Ingrid, I appreciate that. And Ingrid Jacques, uh, she's the deputy editorial page editor of the Detroit News and writes a lot about education. So thanks yes. so much for thanks. joining me. I'm going to ask all of you the same first question, and that would be, give me your assessment of where you think we are with the Detroit Public Schools Community District right now. I'm going to start with you, Pamela. Where we've so, been in this last year. Yeah, so I, I think the last year we've made some improvements, but so much work to be done. And I think uh, Dr. Vitti is the right person. He's uh, proven that he understands how to transition a district three times the size of DPSCD. Um, I think we're optimistic. I think we're hopeful. I think we are about to just jump in and roll up our sleeves and get started. We know the problems. We know about the teacher shortage. We know about the poverty. We know about the wraparound services that are needed. So I think we know the issues and it's just time to get to work. So I think we're very optimistic in the city of Detroit and within the district. John, what would your assessment be? We accomplished three very big things. One, we eliminated the debt. It's incredibly important to the overall fiscal health of DPSCD and sets the stage for massive improvement. Two, we got the board back and the elected school board behaved and uh, did incredible things in picking uh, the new superintendent, Nikolai Vidi. And they had a little bit of pressure. They had, they had a, a lot of people saying, well, how come you're not going to stay? How come Alicia Merriweather wasn't in that, in that final pick? But they held firm to where the trajectory they were going. They, they withstood the pressure, did what they think was right. I happened to support them 100% of what they did. And I think at the end of the day, they proved that an elective school board can do what's right for the children, okay? And the third thing is uh, we uh, got EAA back, which stems the reduction in student count, which is so important, again, to the fiscal health of the district. We're going to get 5,000 kids back. And so I think we sit on the precipice today of something that's quite remarkable. I'm very optimistic that we can start to make the kind of massive uh, uh, improvements that the district needs to give these kids every chance in living thriving lives. I do want to talk a little bit about the EAA because while that is a good thing in terms of bringing them back in the fold in terms of number count, but you also have kids that are, are very challenged as well and that is, going to be, uh, that is going to be a big part of this. Ingrid, let me get your, your two cents or your kind of assessment on, on, on where DPS is standing right now. DPS well, I think, <clears throat> I think in a lot of ways it's an exciting time for the, the district. I mean, it's a fresh slate on uh, several levels as you all have mentioned with the, the financial picture and a new school board, a new superintendent. I just spoke with Dr. Vitti earlier today and it's, uh, I mean, it's going to be a, a pretty sharp learning curve for him, I think, as he's coming in and getting to know the district and, um, you know, all, all the various issues that are, are out there. There are many. I mean, it, it's, a, it's a big job, but he seems to have a, a plan in place. He's going to put together a strategic plan over the next few months and I think it's just going to take some time to really see what kind of leader he is and I think it would be really smart on his part if he got Alicia Merriweather to stay on and he said that they are talking about that right now so I know she has a lot of support among how, the district. How important do you think that is that in terms of consistency? I think it's very important. I think she's been with the district for a long time She's earned the respect of teachers, of the union, of the business community. Uh, she pulls a lot of, brings a lot of people together. And there aren't many people that do that in the polarizing world of education. So I think, uh, I mean, she's, she's got some strong relationships in place with business leaders to turn around the Randolph Technical School. That's a really exciting project. And I think uh, keeping her on could help, you know, keep those projects moving forward. 
Pamela, you still have a lot of parents and teachers and, and kids maybe who are very concerned and looking. They don't know what to expect. And they've been told time and time again, oh, sure. here's a new leader. We're, we're going to have change. Well, here's someone else. Now we're really going to do something now. What would you say to parents who are not sure if they want to keep their kids in the district and or feel that they maybe have to go school shopping again? Well, I think Dr. Vitti is going to sell the district. I think he's going to make some critical changes, uh, I would say, pretty quickly. Um, that will show parents and Detroit in general um, that he's serious, he's a change agent, he has proven practices that have worked in Jacksonville, and I think parents are going to see the change and they're going to feel it and they're going to see it quickly. Um, and what's different is that there are no more emergency managers. We have our own superintendent that was elected, that was selected by our elected school board. And so I think that's the difference. And we have a, a, a leader that was selected from a large pool of 79 applicants, I think. And he has the credentials, he has the experience, he has uh, the track record. And so I think um, he is an excellent, excellent pick. And I think we're very optimistic and I think parents will be optimistic when they see his plan and see the changes that he makes. John, you've been beating the drum and taking the message to anyone that will listen, especially up into Lansing, that the success of the Detroit public schools is crucial to the success of the city and the continued comeback of the city. Do you believe that Lansing is fully on board with whatever needs to be done to help the educational system in Detroit? Or do you feel that you are still fighting to get people to see um, some of the issues that are happening there and, and to invest in them? I don't think that Lansing's fully on board. And it isn't only about the city of Detroit, it's also about the state of Michigan. Michigan has slipped from 13th to 43rd in terms of its educational performance and outcomes. So we still have a big hill to climb in Lansing. I want to make a couple other points. Uh, Dr. Vitti essentially has a five-year no-cut contract. Uh, it would be devastating for the board after six months or eight months to all of a sudden decide he wasn't the right pick in my view. And so he's got some runway, uh, insisted on a five-year contract. When I say no-cut, I don't mean legally, but I'm saying the practicality of it, it's going to take five years to turn this system around. And he's pretty much been given the runway to do that. Now I want to make one more point, and that's about special education. So special education is really the next frontier. It is a disaster that's already happened within DPS. DPSCD loses $40 million a year. So what do I mean by that? That $40 million is taken away from the general population of those students and is one of the reasons why Detroit suffers the least amount of money spent in the classroom of any district in the entire state of Michigan. That has to change. We also have to make a special ed much more transparent. It's very opaque. Where's the money come from? How is it spent? How is the student identified as special ed? We uh, have to have a huge discussion about this, and that has to be teed up this year, and it'll be one of the major issues that the coalition comes forward with in the fall. And, uh, and John brings up a good point, Ingrid, when we're talking about the larger issue of, of K through 12 education in the state of Michigan and where we were and where we find ourselves now. Do you believe that it's a confusion of governance or there is not one clear cut pathway or, or leader in terms of what our education should be in the state of Michigan? Yeah, I think that really hits at the heart of a lot of the problems in, in the state with education and it's something we've uh, been beating the drum on at the news. It's just um, there needs to be a more streamlined approach. There's too many players right now in who's overseeing education and uh, the governor's recent 21st Century Education Commission, that was one of their recommendations to look at maybe even abolishing the State Board of Education, going more to a, a governor appointed board or some sort of mix so that you know there's some sort of top down vision for education. Because right now and too many people are involved and really nothing gets done. And I think we're seeing that over and over. Uh, so I, I think that has to be a priority that means changing the state constitution, but I think that's a worthy a worthy challenge. All right, we only have about a minute left and I'll ask you all the last final question because I feel that each year that we've been here, especially at Mackinac and talking about education and Detroit, we've kind of changed in leaps and bounds. And John, you talked about last year at this time, they were making the deal to, to, to erase the debt um, and, and change. So where do you think that we need to be 
in this next year? I'm going to start with you, Pamela. So I think the reading and math scores are not acceptable. Our third graders are not where they need to be. Our absenteeism rates are, are just unacceptable. Uh, we have to address the teacher shortage. I think that's the number one critical issue. We have to have teachers credential qualified teachers in the classrooms. So I'm hoping that all of those uh, all of those issues have been addressed by this time next year and we're a stable district and we've made some improvements in test scores. We are going to get those EAA schools back. It was a failed experiment. Um, and we just have to educate all of the children in the city of Detroit and bring them back into the district and do what we uh, are supposed to do, educate our children and give them every opportunity that they so rightfully deserve. And I think by this time next year, you'll see some nice changes. John, I agree totally think? with her points. Mm -hmm. Absentee has to improve tremendously. Right now, 25% of the kids are missing on any one day. Mm -hmm. That means these kids are missing 45 days of school a year. You can't go on to the next grade with that kind of absentee rate. I think that also the teachers don't have the best attendance record either. And when you combine that with the fact that there are 850 missing slots that are, that are not filled, uh, many of them would be in, uh, funded by the federal government. We've got to make the DPSCD a more attractive place for teachers to want to come. And that's a host of things from better pay to better environment to, uh, to uh, uh, um, you know, uh, educational improvement for themselves, professional supported. development, I'm trying to say. Those things are essential. And then, of course, the last, and I think the most important is special ed. Mm -hmm. Ingrid, I'm going to give you the last word on this. Okay. Well, those are all good, uh, good things to, to shoot for. I think just in the first year, if the balance sheet can stay, can stay clear, I think that'll be a good sign that the district's under better management, uh, things are on good, a good footing. And I just think there just needs to be a focus on building trust with families and proving that you know, DPS schools are a good option for their kids. Okay. And Ingrid Jocks. John Ricolta, Pamela Moore, thank you so much for joining me. Thank it's you. an important conversation. I appreciate it. 